Hey, 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 what's going on guys? Michael Lindell here. Excited that you guys have taken the time out to uh, view another episode of um, how to get your money right. That's what we do. We talk about money. We talk about finance. We talk about how to get your life right. Today is Friday. Today is Friday. Um, weekends are for the strong. Weekends are for the strong. This may be, may be another segment that we offer on Fridays to get you prepared for your weekend. So as you guys may already know a little bit about me, I am Michael Lindell. I am a, a real estate investor. I'm a serial entrepreneur and I like finance. I talk about money. I talk about how to get that bag. I talk about how to get your life right, how to leave a legacy, how to create generational wealth for you as well as for your family. I want to talk to you guys today. I want to talk to you guys today about, about this right here. I want to talk to you guys today about inflation. All right. I want to talk to you guys about inflation because this is what everyone is talking about right now. Um, this is what's taking place right now in America right now. And I told you guys, I warned you guys that this day was going to come. I told you guys last year that this was going to come. Um, but first I want to say thank you to my man, Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone laced me up with a very 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 lovely package here thank you for the sign hat got the hat right here got the book right here my man gc i told him that i was building out my studio and i wanted some um just some stuff from him so that i can i can put up in the frame uh mr mr, mr. cardone himself been very 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 important to me as well as to my family's life so I want to say thank you to him for for gracing me with those presents. But look, guys, we're talking about inflation today. We're going to talk about inflation. What does it what does it mean? You know, Warren Buffett had made a comment um, some time ago and he said that, you know, if people really understood inflation, they would be so much better off than where they were. I don't think that was just I'm paraphrasing. But that's what he was essentially saying was that, you know, listen, if people just understood inflation, right? They would be so much better off living here in America. And so I told you guys, inflation was going to come. And for those guys who are not, uh, who may not be aware of what inflation is, I am going to um, show you real quick what, what is inflation, right? So whenever you have, whenever you have, and, and, and there's different ways of looking at inflation, right? But this is the general way. No, this is the main way, the main way. It is all it is, is the increase of money supply. All right. Simply put, it is the increase of money supply. No matter what anyone tells you, no matter what economics or economists tell you, inflation by definition is the increase of money supply. Now, some people may say, well, no, well, inflation is um, the increase of prices of goods and service. That is a metric that they gauge to determine if there is inflation. Right. So that is just a metric of, you know, prices of milk and prices of lumber and prices of traveling. And they take all of those different metrics and then they put them together and then they decide if there is an increase in those items and they call it the CPI the consumer price index. All right. So the pr consumer price index was just released and um, they have some stats for you. And I'm going to give you these, these stats. And I'm also showing you guys what you guys should be doing. As I always do, I never give you guys information without showing you guys what you guys should do to, to tough luck, man, tough luck, tough luck, tough luck. But, this is what the CPI came out. I want to share this with you, the CPI. And don't ask me why I'm writing in blue. That's just what the color was for the day. But um, all right. So let's 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 say consumer price index 4.2 percent. OK, 4.2 percent year over year. So the prices of goods and services have increased by 4.2 percent year over year. Typically. Typically, the Federal Reserve like to see about a 2% interest, um, 2% inflation rate year over year. However, for the month has already doubled that year over year at 
percent. And it's the highest since 2008. That's crazy. This consumer price index 4.2% 4 .2 year over year mark is the highest since 2008. And you may be saying to yourself, well, Mike, I'm good out here. I am spending my money. I am, you know, nothing is harming me. I still have my job. But that is a hidden tax, guys. That is a hidden tax that you don't see. It's a cost that you don't really see because you spend your money on things that just are normal and you just don't think about it, right? And so that's why 76% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck because they are unaware they're unaware of these hidden fees, these hidden taxes. It's a hidden tax. Inflation is a hidden tax. Look at this stat here. Okay. Look at this stat here. Energy prices. Energy prices. Okay. Is what? Let me see here. Energy prices. Gasoline. 49%. Okay. Year over year. You have, let's see, fuel costs, 37% year over year, okay? This is gas, this is fuel, okay? All right, and then you have the overall energy price increase, 25% year over year. That's just energy, okay? Gasoline, gasoline at the pump. Gasoline at the pump, okay, is now $3 a gallon. You tell me, are we, are we experiencing inflation or what? Energy prices, 49% year over year, 37% fuel, 25% energy overall. Gasoline, $3 a gallon. I'm not even finished. That's just energy prices. That's energy prices. Look at this, used cars. So if you're out there trying to buy a car, which I, 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 you shouldn't be out there buying a car, by the way, if, if you don't need one. Energy, uh, used cars, check this out, 21% increase. 21% increase in used cars. 21%, lumber, lumber. I wrote all this stuff down, driving in. Lumber is, look at this, 124% increase in lumber prices. So if you guys are out there looking to buy a home, if you're out there looking to buy a new build home, if you're looking to do some remodeling in your home, um, this is really not the time for you to do those things because look, lumber prices are up 124%. You may say the builder is going to pay for it, but you're not, the builder is not going to pay for that because you are, because when they pass that cost on to you, you will be paying that additional surcharge. Um, you may not, uh, you may want to find out exactly what you can do to prevent this from hitting your pockets. I have a couple remedies that you can do to prevent this from hitting your pockets. This is something that I've always encouraged my family to do, um, people that I love the most, people who I talk to the most, people who always ask me for advice. This is what I'm going to share with you today um, on what you can do. Another thing that I noticed when I was down in Chick-fil-A, I don't know if you guys experienced this where you guys are located or not, but Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A, and I noticed this early on, you have to be careful because even though you may not, you may not, uh, I don't know. I think that's how you spell it. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, right? Chick-fil-A, a Happy Meal. Okay. I bought them a Happy Meal. Or I don't think they call it Happy Meal, but they call it a Kids Meal. Okay. And typically I get a two count strip meal. Right. I'm sorry. I typically get a one count <laughs> strip meal. OK, and that, and I went through the drive through a few times, by the way. So it's not just they just ran out of chicken, but I went there and I asked them for a one count 
and they told me all they had was a two count strip mill. That is a form of inflation. Whenever they take away one particular option and only offer you the most expensive option, that is a way in which they're increasing the price on you, forcing you to buy the more expensive item rather than buying the least item. I'm saying to myself, how can you guys not offer me one count when you're already offering me two count? How does that make sense, Way? <laughs> how does that make sense? And so it doesn't make sense. So that's another form of inflation. So you may be saying to yourself, why is this taking place? Why is this taking place? I'll tell you right now, this is why. Seven trillion $7 trillion. That's what's taking place. In 2020, the government printed, created $7 trillion and put it into the market. There were a lot of pent up demand. So when you have a lot of people, when you have a lot of people not spending money in 2020, and as you get ready to see the economy rebound and people are starting to go back out to work, people are starting to spend more money, go out shop and travel and things of that nature. This is what you typically have what happens. This is what typically happens. So whenever you have uh, demand, okay, whenever you have demand is up, right? Meaning people wanna travel, people wanna spend money, people are wanna get out. You then have supply. Then you have to ask yourself, can the businesses keep up with it? And the answer is no. So, so indirectly what you have here, you have inflation. And this is what the CPI look at. They look at, okay, they look at how much are prices of goods and services increasing. So whenever you have the demand, whenever the demand increases, however, the supply is decreased, and the reason why the supply is decreased is because there was a supply chain mix up. There were people not really traveling. There were not food trucks traveling. You know, we weren't able to get products in from other countries as we as we typically would have. And so what happens is you have a supply shortage of a lot of different things. We see this in the real, in, in the real estate market. A lot of people didn't even are choosing not to. They chose not to sell their home in 2020. And so that put more pressure on real estate because there was not enough supply to keep up with demand because demand was high for real estate. Interest rates were low. So whenever interest rates are low, that means money is cheaper to get. So because interest rates were low, the demand was high. However, the supply was lower because a lot of people chose not to sell their home because of the pandemic. That's why you see a huge increase in real estate now because of supply and demand. Supply and demand, whenever supply is up and supply is low, you're going to ultimately have inflation. But the number one metric, the number one metric of inflation is the increase of money supply. And that's what we have here. Seven trillion dollars. This day was going to come, by the way. It's just a matter of if you were ready. So we're talking about weekends are for the strong. Weekends are for the strong. What should you be doing right now? What should you be doing right now to safeguard your assets right now? What should you be doing right now to safeguard your money? What should you be doing right now? What should you be doing, Mike? What should I be doing, Mike? I don't know, Mike. You know, what, 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 what should we do? The answer is you need to stop spending. You want to stop spending on anything that's already increasing in value. If it's not a if it's not an asset that's producing you income, that's going to pay for that asset in the long run, then you don't want to buy it. So the first thing that you want to do right now is to say, listen, family, wife, boyfriend, family, loved ones. Listen, we are going to stop the spending right now. We need to go on a spending freeze because the more money you spend, the more money you spend, okay, the more money you spend, the more money you spend, okay, the more money, 
is going to cost you. Y'all may say, well, that doesn't make sense. Should make sense to you. The more money you spend, the more it will cost you. Meaning when you're talking about inflation, right? One dollar is always going to be one dollar. One dollar. Where's my dollar at? One dollar. One dollar. One dollar. Okay. One dollar. Or a hundred. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars will always be a hundred dollars. However, it may not have the same purchasing power today as it will tomorrow. And you say, why is that? This hundred dollars will always, always, always be one hundred dollars. Always, because here it is. It's one hundred. OK, however, it may not buy the same item today as it will tomorrow. So the more money you spend, the more of this I spend of this, the more it's going to cost me money. The more it's going to cost me to buy something else. For example, here's my phone right here. If today I can buy my phone for one hundred dollars. OK, if I can buy this phone for one hundred dollars today. OK, and then tomorrow there's a surge in this price and they say, well, Mike, uh, th that same phone is we, we've had an increase in that price inflation. OK, that means, OK, now the phone, Mike, is now one hundred and twenty dollars. Here you go. Here's one twenty for the same phone. Nothing happened with the phone. They probably took a, a charger off the phone, by the way. They probably took a charger off the phone. They probably took something out the phone, right, to save on costs because they're going to they're going to take that charger out and then they're going to sell you the charger separately so that they can make more premium on that phone. That's another form of inflation. We just talked about that. So they say the same phone is now one hundred and twenty dollars. That's why the more money you spend, the more of these you buy, the more items you buy right now. OK, the more money it will cost you to buy that same item. OK, so. What should you be doing right now, Mike? What should I be doing right now? The first thing that you should do, like I just said, is stop the spending. Stop the spending, okay? Because the more money you spend, the more money it will cost you. The second thing that you need to do is wait it out. Uh, these things will take its course. Inflation will take its course no matter what's happening, no matter what. If people stop spending right now, this is why I say it's not about spending. It's about the increase of money supply. OK. And it's also about the supply. OK. Forget the demand. If you take demand out the equation and all you had was supply, prices would still increase. Right. Because no one is buying it. So because if no one is buying it, the manufacturers have to make up the cost somehow, some way to pay for that item that they just produced in their store. So they have to increase the prices of that supply. Right. So this was going to happen anyway. However, when I say wait it out, what I mean is give it time to level out. OK, there's pent up demand right now. There's a lot of people that's out, that's out there buying, buying, buying. And when people are out there buying, buying, buying the people are, you know, manufacturers and business owners are saying, listen, we got to make up costs from what we lost last year in 2020 due to the pandemic. So because we lost that cost, because we lost it, because we lost all this money, we have to make up for it in 2021. And we're going to do it when we get out of the pandemic. And so that's what's taking place right now. So, but as you start to as people start to pull back and not spend a lot of money, but spending modestly like people at the gas station, you saw the coal, you saw Colonial Pipeline, I think it was right. Colonial Pipeline just the other day <clears throat> had a breach. And so when they had the breach, they had a lot of people say, listen, I'm about to go to the gas station. And I was almost one of them, by the way. Uh, but they have a lot of they, they saw a lot of people go to the pumps and say, look, I'm about to fill up my car because if there is any shortage of gas, uh, I want it now. And so that's another form of inflation. Right. You saw that happening when there is a decrease of supply. OK, when you take that supply out, there's different ways of looking at inflation. What happened with the colonial was they took the supply out the market or they didn't really take the supply of the market because gas was always going to get here. 
right? Because they, if you if you have a shortage from one particular company, they can pull from another gas um, station and, and 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 fill another station if they need to. But was 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 what happened was they took the supply out the market or they panicked and thought that the supply was going to go off the market and they sp and they used the gas so a lot of gas stations saw that and they said let's increase our prices let's try to increase our prices your boy biden tried to step in and try to save the day and try to prevent that from happening but that's what happens with inflation so you have you can either stop spending stop spending your money right now only spend things that's going to produce money only buy things that's going to produce income. As long as you can buy something right now that produces income. So you have it has to produce income. OK. Only stop spending if it does not produce income for you guys. OK. And then you can also wait it out. You can wait this process out and just wait it out. Just ride the wave. Just ride the wave. So these are some things that you can do right now, today, to alleviate this inflation that we're in. Buy assets right now. You can still buy as long as the assets pay for itself. All right. This is the weekends for the strong. I want you guys, listen, it is the weekend. It is the weekend. It is the weekend. It is the weekend. You guys work really hard this week. You guys put food on the table for your wives, for your husbands. Um, it is the weekend, right? And I talk a lot on the station. I talk a lot on the station about, listen, it's okay to relax and enjoy yourself. Enjoy your, your significant other. Enjoy your loved ones. Enjoy your family. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. However, you have to be strong on the weekend because the strong on the weekend is going gonna, is gonna to give you the ammo to be strong during the week when people are weak. People are typically weak on the weekdays and the weekends, right? But what makes people stronger is when people resist the flesh on the weekends, because if they can save enough money, if they can save their resources from those two days where people spend most of their money, if they can save their resources on those two particular days, then it would give them the ammo to be able to make it through the week. So I want you guys, if you haven't already picked it up, get this book, themichaelindell.com, themichaelindell.com. If you haven't already, I want you to like and subscribe to the ch channel because that's the only way I can continue doing these videos for you guys. Please like, please subscribe to this channel, guys. Leave your feedback. You know, what do you want to hear? What do you want me to talk about? I'll, I'll love to share this information with you. If you haven't already got this book, get it, themichaelindell.com, themichaelindell.com. The book is absolutely free. And um, also what I am going to do, by the way, I am going to throw in, I am going to throw in this book right here for you guys. This book right here is a game changer, okay? It is a absolute game changer. Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. This book, I'm gonna throw this book in with, this, with my book, okay? This is how you build wealth. This is how you understand economics so that you can continue to grow the wealth here. All right. So I want you guys to get this book. When you go to themichaelindell.com, get this book. It's free. All you do is pay for the shipping on this book. All right. I originally bought, uh, wrote this book for the underserved. I wrote it for myself. I said, because if anything was to ever happen to me, I want to leave a legacy for my for my son. So I wrote down all these notes and things and what, what to do with you have zero dollars, what to do, what to do next and how to build a business and all that stuff. I put it in this very, very short book here. Um, but I also want to throw in this book for you if you get my book. All right. Get my book and get this for free. All right. So this is another episode. All right. Weekends are for the strong. 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 Are you weak or are you strong? It's your boy, Michael Lindell. Peace out. Happy weekend, everybody.